So I almost deleted this channel this morning. Um, this is my third day of doing my Good mor Morning show, which I named Good Morning Gardeners. And for the past two days, I have been using this show as I intended it to be used by you guys. And I have been just turning it on, you know, after I get dressed, as I'm making breakfast, as I'm making coffee, going about my day. And... Uh, yeah, as I'm sure many of you know, listening to your own voice can be incredibly uncomfortable, um, especially if you're not really used to it. And also, watching yourself speak to a camera can be incredibly uncomfortable. So that has been fun for me. And this morning, as I was doing it, you know, I thought like, I'm not sure this is for me. <laughs> um, but then I thought like, you know what? I can delete it at any time. I can delete the videos, make them private anytime. Um, so I will just wait until I've had one cup of coffee. And after my first cup of coffee, I was still wanted it to, I still wanted to delete it. So then I was like, okay, I'll wait until after I eat my breakfast. And by the time I had finished my breakfast, I was already thinking about what I wanted to talk about today. So we're not deleting it today. We're not taking down the videos yet. We might in the future, but for now, I think this is really, um, it's still really useful for me because I'm not only experiencing the feeling that I might be helping someone else get centered, um, but I'm actually centering myself for my day. So it's been great. And, uh, you know, I also had the thought today that maybe I should create like a goal of doing so many episodes in a row, like maybe uh, a month, which would not be 30 days because I am not doing this on the weekends. I'm only going to be bringing you content Monday through Friday for your weekday routine. Um, and yeah, maybe I should just set the goal of doing this, uh, you know, through the end of May for example. And then at that point, I can reevaluate my life. And that is actually how I do a lot of things. Um, I find that to be a really useful way to implement goals instead of like the really popular thing of like doing a goal for a whole year. That can be good um, if you know that that goal is going to be good for you and it's actually going to be helpful for you. Um, but for me, a lot of times I just like to try things out, you know, try it on, see how it fits. And uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure whether this one fits or not. So I think I might just do it through the end of May, set myself that goal. And then if once I achieve it, it's like I'm given a permission structure to release it, say, yay, I did that challenge. I'm better now for it. Or to continue it if I feel like it is actually helpful and or valuable. Um, and speaking of trying something on, did you guys know, I learned this recently in a book I've been reading, Psycho-Cybernetics, you may have heard of it, um, that the word habit originally just meant like an article of clothing, and it actually still can mean that in certain contexts. Um, like with religious clothing, uh, for example. So whenever you do a habit, you are metaphorically donning clothing that is sort of reinforcing your identity as the type of person who does that thing. Um, so like for me, I am now the type of person who wakes up and talks to a camera. Um, before I've done almost anything else, I have eaten and I have had coffee, but, um, yeah, I don't know what kind of person that makes me, but it's interesting. So anyway, good morning, gardeners. I am here to sprinkle some water on the seeds that you're planting today. Um, I hope that you are planting seeds for a better tomorrow, and I hope that you enjoy your day in the sun. Do you guys like those gardening analogies? <laughs> um, honestly, I don't think that I am good at naming things. 
I am much more of a visual branding person, but I also kind of have this belief that the name of something isn't super important. Uh, maybe I'm biased on that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I I don't know anything about gardening. This plant is probably going to die really soon. I can't keep houseplants alive to save my own life. Um, I just named this show kind of on a whim, but it also just kind of felt right because, um, you know, when I think about the community of people that I would ideally like to speak to, it is people who are cultivating not only a better life for themselves, but also a better world for everyone. And I know that that sounds cheesy or whatever, but that's true. That's just the people that I want to interact with. And I feel like the gardening analogy fits really well with that. Um, okay, so today for our learning moment, I am going to teach you about brand archetypes. Yesterday, we spoke about inhibition, disinhibition, and this idea that your true self, your true uninhibited, not too uninhibited, but like optimally uninhibited personality is your best personality. And all authentic personalities are good personalities. Um, so before I get to the learning moment, I will start with the feel good moment. And the one for today, the thought we have for today, that is my dog uh, moaning. Um, so the feel good thought that we have for today goes like this. You can only change your personality so much. And that might not originally sound like a good thought if you're anything like me. When I was young, when I was in probably the eighth grade, I was prompted to take the Myers-Briggs personality test. And it, I had to like write a paper about it or something. And let me just tell you, I was really unhappy with the one that I got. I got INTJ and I hated it. And basically I retook that test. That's a big test. I had to take, retake that test like 10 times to um, incrementally lie to myself a little bit more and more each time to try and get a different result. Um, that's how sort of ingrained my personality is and immovable my personality is, um, which you know, I have always thought of, or at least not always, but when I was younger, I thought of that as a bad thing. I tried really, really hard throughout my adolescence and even young adulthood, well into my 20s, to change my personality, to change myself, to become like an extrovert who was like great at, um, who was great with feelings and empathizing. And I don't know, I... <laughs> I am good at empathizing. I just don't do it the way that I thought most people do it. But anyway, I digress. So I couldn't change my personality. So I stopped trying. And instead, I started trying to improve my skills and my knowledge. And the crazy thing is that when I did this, my personality started to change a little bit, but it didn't change like in the way that I'm no longer introverted or I'm no longer, I honestly, I don't remember the Myers-Briggs stuff that very well. Um, and, you know, I take all personality type quizzes with a grain of salt. Um, but anyway, I didn't so much change the core of who I am. I just changed the way that I process, you know, inputs, outputs, internal processing, everything like that, um, so that I have a different perspective now. And I interact with people differently now. Um, so 
This is all to say that if you are, if you ever feel stressed or worried that maybe your personality isn't great or your personal brand isn't great, you're only making it worse by stressing about it. Um, as I said in yesterday's episode, the best personality is a relaxed, authentic, just true expression of the self. Similarly, a personal brand is just the relaxed expression of your personal self. So the good news here, the good thought here is that you don't have to really work at it. All you have to work at doing is relaxing. And that is a very like type A thing to say. Not everybody has to work at relaxing. Some people do. Um, but relaxing is actually something that I have gotten better at. So that's a bonus. Uh, good thought for you today. It is possible to improve at relaxing. It is possible to become more relaxed into yourself. And when you do that, your personality and your personal brand should also become uh, better. They should flow more freely and they will become better without you really having to do much, which is really nice. Uh, so now that I have already sort of started talking about personal branding, I wanted to explain briefly because I know that a lot of people hate that phrase and honestly it's understandable because in today's world there's such a pressure to sort of like cultivate that outward, you know, expression of the self, cultivate that personal brand and make it perfect and polished and, you know, just fully palatable to anyone. Um, but when you do that, you are not expressing your true personal self. If you are actively, you know, manufacturing this sort of fake personal brand from the outside in. So I just want to say right now that when I do say the phrase personal brand, I am speaking about your personality in the context of how it is received by people, not your close friends, not your, you know, partner or your close, the people, your inner circle, your inner circle knows, you know, if not everything about you, they know you more deeply than um, than everyone else. So when we speak about a brand, we speak about sort of that surface level impression. And yes, it should be honest. And yes, it should be reflective of who you are deeply. But it's just the way that most people see your personality. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, let me tell you guys a little bit about brand archetypes now. I am going to be explaining some stuff from this book. I love this book. It was written in the early 2000s. It's called The Hero and the Outlaw, and it was written by Carol S. Pearson and Margaret Mark. And you can see I have read through this book. I read cover to cover once and then I use it as reference all the time for work. You may not need to use this for work, but if you want to use it to think about your personal brand, to think about your personality and who you are and you know, try and figure that out so you can more easily relax into it. I thought it might be helpful to introduce you to the brand archetypes. There are 12. Um, so the first one is the innocent. The innocent brand archetypes motto is free to be you and me. 
Their core desire is to experience paradise. Their goal is to be happy. Their fear is doing something wrong or bad that will provoke punishment. Their strategy is to do things right. And their gift is faith and optimism. The second brand archetype is the explorer. Their motto is don't fence me in. The explorer's core desire is the freedom to find out who you are through exploring the world. Their goal is to experience a better, more authentic, more fulfilling life. Their greatest fear is getting trapped, conforming, inner emptiness, non-being. Their strategy is the journey, seeking things out and experiencing new things, escaping from entrapment and boredom. Their they have a trap, which is aimless wandering or becoming a misfit, and their gift is autonomy, ambition, ability to be true to one's own soul. The next brand archetype is the sage. Disregard that if you heard that. So the sage's core desire is the discovery of truth. Their goal is to use intelligence and analysis to understand the world. Their greatest fear is being duped, misled, or ignorance. Their strategy is to seek out information and knowledge, become self-reflective, and understand the thinking process. Their trap is that they can study issues forever and never act. The next brand archetype is the hero. Their motto is where there's a will, there's a way. The hero's core desire is to prove one's worth through courageous and difficult action. Their goal is to exert mastery in a way that improves the world. Their fear is weakness, vulnerability, or wimping out. Their strategy is to become as strong, competent, and powerful as they are capable of being. Their trap is arrogance, developing a need for their always to be an enemy. Their gifts are competence and courage. The other side of the coin of the hero is the outlaw. Um, these two archetypes are very closely linked and um, it can be very easily for a brand to slip between hero and outlaw. Also, the hero needs an outlaw to fight, and the outlaw needs a hero to fight. It's very interesting. So the outlaw's motto is, rules are meant to be broken. My dog is moving around so much today, I don't know where she wants to go. Okay, so the outlaw's core desire is revenge or revolution. Their goal is to destroy what's not working for the outlaw or the society. Their fear is being powerless, trivialized, inconsequential. Their strategy is to disrupt, destroy, or shock. Their trap is to go over to the dark side, or criminality. Their gift is outrageousness and radical freedom. The next brand archetype is the magician. Their motto is, it can happen. Their core desire is knowledge of the fundamental laws of how the world or universe works. Their goal is to make dreams come true. Fear, unanticipated negative consequences. Strategy, develop vision and live it. Trap, become manipulative. Gift, finding out win-win outcomes. Or finding win-win outcomes. Next, we have the regular guy slash gal. I will just call this one the regular person. And their motto is, all people are created equal. The regular person's core desire is connection with others. Their goal is to belong and fit in. Their fears are standing out, seeming to put on airs, and being exiled or rejected as a result. 
Their strategy is developing ordinary solid virtues, the common touch, and blending in. Their trap is to give up the self to blend in in exchange for only a superficial connection. Their gift is realism, empathy, and lack of pretense. Next, we have the lover, whose motto is, I only have eyes for you. The core desire of the lover archetype is to attain intimacy and experience sensual pleasure. Their goal is being in a relationship with the people, the work, the experiences, and the surroundings they love. Fear is being alone, a wallflower, unwanted, unloved. Strategy is becoming more and more attractive, physically, emotionally, and in every other way. Their trap is doing anything and everything to attract and please others, losing identity. Their gifts are passion, gratitude, appreciation, and commitment. Next, we have the jester. Their motto is, if I can't dance, I don't want to be part of your revolution. Their core desire is to live in the moment with full enjoyment. Their goal is to have a great time and lighten up the world. Their fear is boredom or being boring. Their strategy is to play, make jokes, and be funny. Their trap is frittering away one's life. Their gift is joy. Next, we have the caregiver. Their motto is love your neighbor as yourself. The caregiver's desire is to protect people from harm. Their goal is to help others. Their fear is selfishness or ingratitude. Their strategy is to do things for others. Their trap is martyrdom of the self and entrapment of others. Their gift is compassion and generosity. Next, we have the creator. Their motto is, if it can be imagined, it can be created. The creator's core desire is to create something of enduring value. Their goal is giving form to a vision. Their fear is having a mediocre vision or execution. Their strategy is to develop artistic control and skill. Their task is to create culture, express their own vision. Their trap is perfectionism and miscreation. Did I say task? So their task is to create culture or express their own vision. Their trap is perfectionism or miscreation. Their gift is creativity and imagination. And the last brand archetype is the ruler. Their motto is power isn't everything, it's the only thing. The ruler's core desire is control. Their goal is to create a prosperous, successful family, company, or community. Their strategy is to exert leadership. Their fear is of chaos and being overthrown. The trap is being bossy or an authoritarian. Their gift is responsibility and leadership. So I read these to you today. This book was written for mostly people in business, people who are working on business culture and branding. So in the context of a business, um, according to this book, you would want to choose one of those to embody your business's personality. But I think that these brand archetypes can also be really useful for an individual figuring out their personality and or their personal brand. Obviously, you know, every individual is going to have some aspects of every brand archetype in them, at least throughout their life at some point. But I think it can be really useful to figure out maybe your top three. Um, I think for me, my top three would probably be the sage, the explorer, and the magician. Um, So if you find that interesting, let me know what you think your top three brand archetypes are for your personality or personal brand.
And that leads into today's focus moment. We are going a bit long today, but no, actually, we're not going long. It's, this is actually perfect. Okay. So does the idea of having to give an elevator pitch or introducing yourself to a group stress you out? I know it stresses me out. Do you go blank when someone asks you to tell them about yourself? I do. I forget that I am a person and, you know, who I am at all. If somebody says, tell me about yourself. (laughs) Well, if this is you, it could be because you are thinking too much about this. You're too inhibited and you basically just need to relax. One thing that can help you relax about a topic is to simplify it um, and to think about it in terms of overarching themes or archetypes. So I would encourage you today to think about these brand archetypes. Think about, you know, which one or three or even five, however many you want, really speak to your core values and who you feel like as a person. And maybe you can use this to benefit your life in some way. Maybe you can use it to make introducing yourself easier. Um, Maybe you can use it to, you know, make your personal brand more effortless. And if you think that you don't have a personal brand, you do. Everybody has a personal brand. It's just the way that people who don't know you very well see you. Of course, people who know you well can see it too, but they see more than that. So they might not really think about the personal brand. Anyway, please let me know if you have any questions and enjoy your day. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.